having me um and uh, we visited also wrestlings in person in september and it was a very nice um, experience so we decided uh, that we also we uh, would like to contribute uh, this topic embedded uh, rust on esp32 uh, because uh, me my team and um, uh, rust community was working uh, hard to uh, make uh, embedded uh, rust running on uh, esp32s and uh, the family of chips uh, developed by espressive so this talk uh, won't uh, be just uh, about like embedded rust we will also touch topic like WebAssembly uh, and uh, how it can be also interesting for embedded developers and uh, how you can like reuse the same business logic that you can write for desktop or server um, and, and run the same business logic on ESP chips. So let's see. Um, here is the first slide. Uh, uh, th this is kind of uh, like like beginning. Here you can see on the picture Scott Mabin. Uh, it's the founder of uh, ESPRS uh, GitHub organization, uh, and uh, this is kind of his initial post. I, I find it funny. It's it's like uh, uh, Linus Torvalds when he was uh, creating his uh, Linux kernel, and uh, he posted the first email. Uh, this this is like a similar post that uh, Scott did, uh, that he was trying to uh, get Rust uh, running on. Uh, Expressive uh, chip ESP32 uh, by the time. And um, yeah, he had some uh, issues with that, but he uh, finally succeeded in uh, making it happen. Uh, you can find uh, more uh, details at uh, his blog, mabus.dev, and uh, read about the history. And uh, he's also posting some updates uh, each quarter, where we moved, what we added, what is possible. And also here is a, a link to YouTube, uh, where you can find uh, Scott's talk uh, about the Rust and Express chips he's uh he's talking uh, more about like uh, like generic uh, scope uh today i will focus more about uh the practical details so i will show you uh, several demonstrations so e even if you are not uh, like embedded developer uh you can uh, see what's possible uh and, and you can start thinking how can you reuse uh, the skills that you know from uh, developing for servers or desktop also for embedded chips too, because with rust uh, um, the, the barrier is, is really uh, getting lower because uh, previously it was only possible with uh, C or Arduino. So first of all, uh, let's start build hardware. And uh, thanks to cooperation with uh, Uri Shaket uh, from Wokwicom, uh, we have uh, added a support there with like his great contribution for Rust. So now you can play uh, with the embedded hardware uh, with in your web browser without needing to connect any wires uh, and uh, building uh, complex uh, connections like here. So let me show you a demo. So uh, here it is, uh, just type walkwecom slash Rust and you should be able to uh, see this page. And here are several examples. Uh, you may know this page also uh, with uh, the Arduino examples and MicroPython and CircuitPython. If you remove the slash Rust, you will get a list of other examples. So let's start, let's select this ESP32 uh, no STD uh, example. Yeah, so, so, and now let's see what, what is here on the right side there is led uh with one resistor and uh, esp32 dev board uh, which uh, has some gpios um, if you were watching uh, september talk about raspberry pi uh, lisa was uh, there explaining uh, the situation if you got the raspberry pi there are also gpios that you can connect to uh, some external hardware S situation is here similar uh, instead of uh, Raspberry Pi we have here ESP32 chip which is able to communicate with the world uh, using this uh, GPIO pins so and let's go uh, to the code so what we can see here first of all uh, I'm showing you so-called bare metal rust um, why it's uh, important um, uh, if you are writing normal desktop Rust application, you are probably using the string formatters, uh, like format, macro, and so on. Uh, but this stuff is relatively expensive. Uh, if you go to embedded hardware, each byte, each uh, processor cycle counts. 
So um, uh, Rust offers this uh, unique um, opportunity to say, OK, I don't want anything from standard library. I am going from scratch. So I am selecting what I'm composing my system from. And this is what no std allows us to do and you can find many libraries are already no std ready so you can just say uh, no features and it will turn the library into no std mode for example anyhow crate uh, or any other of this crate so uh, we are in no std mode and uh, um, you will find here a kind of boilerplate code that is very similar across the examples if you compare it to Arduino examples, Arduino is quite a simple, but let me explain why. Um, so first of all, let's uh, use some crates. Uh, we uh, need to access a hardware. And in that case, we need some hardware abstraction layer. Um, and it's provided by the crate ESP32 hall. And uh, what we are importing here, let's, let's see, here's the clock. Yeah, that's something that we understand. We are working something with the CPU clocks. Uh, then we have this pack. It's not a Pac-Man, uh, it's a peripheral access crate. And that's something very important in embedded world and each vendor uh, of uh, embedded uh, devices like a chips uh, should publish this uh, because uh, it allows uh, um, the developer to interact with the hardware. Basically, it's the description of registries and this is like very, very low level stuff. Uh, since uh, we are providing this uh, hall, you do not need to uh, no much details about it, but uh, this is critical to have. And then have, we have some RTC, real-time clocks, uh, I.O., so we can interact with input-output, and we will need some delay. So that's what we are importing. Uh, here, you can see that we are also using our own println. Uh, this is specific and uh, very optimized, written just, just for, for the chip. So this is what I said in the beginning, that uh, if I am using no STD, I can say, okay, nothing from STD is coming here. I'm using custom implementation of println, uh, which has a similar contract like println, uh, but it uses, I don't know, less memory. And it's, for example, without uh, memory allocation which is critical uh, in some places. And now we are going into the main. And uh, here is how uh, the code starts. So I'm grabbing uh, peripherals. Uh, this is a thing you can call once, and uh, you will get access to the peripherals uh, that uh, chip can control. Uh, then uh, we are uh, getting a system and clock. Here I can set uh, the CPU uh, frequency uh, because most of these uh, chips allows you to choose from different clock frequencies by different clock divider. Um, this is important because the higher frequency, uh, the more energy intensive is the computation. So uh, you will burn more energy. Uh, the results will be faster, uh, but if you're operating on battery, it's better to tune down the clock, for example, to like yeah, 80 megahertz or something like that. If you need more CPU power, you can boost it to 240 if chip allows it. Uh, okay, uh, now here is a small uh, dance with the watchdogs, VDT. <laughs> it's basically, we are saying, okay, hey chip, do not care uh, about the, the watchdogs, please disable them uh, and do not reset our application. Um, if we enable the watchdog, it will require some additional code to to um, make watchdog happy. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, uh, here I am getting the GPIO. I am getting the GPIO number four. You can see it's here connected and uh, it's turned into the output pin. So I can write to this thing. Yeah? So if I put here something, it will turn LED on or off based on uh, the, the level of voltage that is here. So uh, let's set high, unwrap. I can then print a hello world to serial console uh, and uh, then again switch uh, the LED. So let's run this thing in the simulator and yeah, hello world is running and blinking. So simple. <laughs> so we are able to, to do it with Rust and uh, hello lint. Let's change it just to see whether I'm, uh, whether it's able to compile. 
And meanwhile, while it's compiling, I can also explain uh, some other tabs that you can see here. Uh, here is, for example, the uh, diagram.json. You can put it to your project. And basically, in this diagram JSON, there is a JSON representation of uh, the schematics here. Uh, you can also see in the uh, simulator uh, cargo tomo, uh, so you are uh, free to uh, grab this uh, uh, cargo tomo and uh, create your own project with that. Okay, so uh, one important thing is uh, with the walkway, it's uh, for community for sharing the knowledge. Uh, you can. Uh, grab the URL that you have, it has unique ID and send it to anybody else and uh, the user will see uh, exactly the same project uh, and you can create more a uh, project by this. And uh, it's even possible to flash your real chip from here and there is a hidden F1, I will try to press it, F1 uh, palette uh, where you can have uh, some special commands and there is uh, also like flash firmware to, to device. This is really nice. Okay, we got a compilation ready. Hello, Linz. Hello, Linz. So it's it's working. Wonderful. Um, the compilation took a little bit longer because uh, probably the uh, server, uh, the, the runner was down and it took some time to spin it up. But when people are using it, the response time is then uh, faster. So it works. Wonderful. Let's uh, move back uh, to the walkway. So what you can see here, in the first line, you can see uh, examples uh, based in STD. So let's compare how uh, this Blink example work, looks like if I'm implementing so-called STD. Uh, it's like uh, you are running an operating system like Linux. So you can use the STD on the Windows. You can use STD and... Uh, and uh, here you can you can see this uh, STD, uh, and uh, basically in case uh, of uh, uh, ESP chips, we are using uh, ESP IDF framework, which is written in C, and uh, Rust application is running on top of this operating system. So that's another option. Uh, we got this, this STD approach and uh, this allows us to, to leverage the functions uh, which are uh, provided from uh, ESP IDF. I will speak about it later. So um, let's see what are the other examples here. Um, let me pick, uh, for example, this one uh, with the metrics. Uh, and this is really cool because uh, here uh, you can see the, the scrolling text. You can see how the hardware is connected uh, to the chip. You can see that there's like not many wires and the thing is moving. <laughs> uh, and the really nice thing is from the source code perspective that, for example, this uh, Max uh, driver uh, that is here for uh, displaying the content uh, is... Uh, 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 what was written uh, even before we started with this example. So we were able to reuse the code uh, uh, for, from this crate uh, and call it directly uh, because there is already uh, no, no STD implementation. So th this is very nice. So if somebody wrote it for PC or Raspberry Pi, you can grab the same crate and uh, run it on ESPs. And uh, th this is really like uh, very nice. Um, Okay, so hello, Lynx. Let's try it. Let's try the small update here. Uh, and um, here you can see that it's also possible, for example, to call uh, unsafe functions um, if you need to, to do so. Um, so it's like a classical Rust, like you can do on, on desktop. Uh, with the bare metal, you just uh, control everything that is going uh, into, the, uh, into the mix. So uh, here are some other examples uh, you can play with it. And let me uh, go back uh, to the slides. Uh, so uh, you can find all the source code uh, related to Wokwi at uh, github.com slash uh, 
the the things uh, are open source you can contribute your own examples uh, and uh, Uri will be more than happy if, if you have some like great ideas um, you can put it there we are thinking about organizing a contest for rust community uh, in writing these examples uh, so uh, we'll keep you posted about that and then there is also a link to your talk i recommend to watch it uh, even though uh, for example you're not uh, working directly with rust but you know arduino and you know you would like to know more details uh it's uh expressive developer uh, conference 22 and yuri is talking there uh, about uh, esp32 and uh, walkway in the, the web browser he did like very amazing job with that so uh, and about the operating system integrations, uh, I already mentioned the bare metal. That was the, the first part I was showing. Okay, now we are going like bare metal and uh, we don't want any bloat from operating system. But that comes with a cost. And that means that uh, um, all drivers that you need for uh, working with peripherals must be ready and it's not always the case so uh, if we go to uh, to github.com express sprs organization and uh, uh, look for esp hall which is implementing the bare metal thing here in issues you can find one pinned issue uh, which uh, tracks current state of supported peripherals. Uh, and uh, if, if you are playing with embedded hardware, probably this abbreviation like DAG, DMA, GPIO, i 2 c and i 2 s uh, will tell you something. <laughs> and uh, you can see that some of them are implemented and some of them are still missing. So if you are into the bare metal and you would like to help us and the community, we are looking for uh, for contributors who would like to uh, solve uh, support for, I don't know, uh, uh, Tway or um, OHC1. Uh, regarding the Wi-Fi, we have support. There is a ESP uh, Wi-Fi uh, project, so you can also use the bare metal with Wi-Fi. It's kind of beta stage because, yeah, it's bare metal, so <laughs> we have to do everything from scratch. So uh, let's go. Back here. So then uh, the second option, which operating system you can use uh, is this ESP IDF. Uh, it's full featured, uh, like you can, if you find ESP chip somewhere, I don't know, um, in some switch around you, uh, then it's probably using ESP IDF because it's based on the free RTOS and uh, there is a C and C++ implementation. Uh, then, uh, for people who would like to be like not so vendor locked in, um, there is another option to use uh, Zephyr for operating system. And uh, Zephyr is uh, very nice uh, because it allows you to run the Rust application on top of it. And um, for example, you can host one, uh, you can host a Rust application on one core uh, and, and make it isolated. This is really nice. And similar for Natex. Natex is more like Linux-ish operating system. You get the notion of uh, slash dev and uh, um, uh, you will get a shell and uh, this is really nice. So you can also use this operating system. Uh, but um, this is more for like uh, the kernel developers. If you, you need to know something about the kernels to work with this thing, um, but definitely uh, there are use cases for that. Um, one important thing uh, is that Espressif is publishing also SVD files, which are then used for generating peripheral access crates uh, to access the hardware. So, uh, and uh, I, I will mention here the, the product Espressif.com. Uh, just let me show you quickly uh, what it is. Uh, it, it's a product selector. So if you need a special chip with special parameters, you can filter it here. You can say, okay, I need 12 GPIOs. Please give me all chips that have uh, 12 GPIOs. Uh, and uh, if you need some memory, we always recommend to order chips with some PS4 memory uh, for, for hobbyists and uh, for makers. Uh, that allows you to put their bigger application. Uh, because uh, some, for example, if you are hosting embedded web server, it makes sense. And you can do some filtering here. Here is all 
even the legendary A266. Um, unfortunately, the bare metal rust support is, is not there uh, because it's kind of old chip. And uh, for new designs, we recommend ESP32 as the baseline. If you are going uh, for something which is like a really um, uh, computing intensive, the S3 is the choice because it is uh, like bigger and uh, has more performance to it. So now to, to the development, and we have many options how to develop for uh, expressive chips. First of all, you can use the local development, uh, like uh, for, I don't know, desktop. Uh, we have this ESP app uh, install. Uh, it's a tool for Mac, Linux, Windows, uh, even the Mac M1. Uh, you just run the ESP app install. It bootstrap whole environment, including the Rust app, uh, and um, set up all the tool chain, download uh, libc link for you, and uh, many other other stuff. So uh, that's that's relatively easy. Uh, if you prefer developing in the local container, uh, there is a nice integration uh, with Podman, uh, Docker, or Lima. So you can use just the Visual Code Remote, and uh, in the remote container, you can develop. Uh, or uh, we have also the support for uh, cloud uh, development using Gitput, uh, IO, or Code Spaces. Uh, and we did talk about this in one talk uh, during developer conference. Here's the link again. So, uh, and now let's let's uh, explore how to uh, work with it. Uh, let's uh, create a project. So let's pull the terminal. How to start with cargo new uh, cargo. Generate. So uh, if I go to um, the ESPRS, uh, here you can find several repos. Uh, there is like ESP template. This is for bare metal. This is for uh, working with uh, IDF. So let's go for the bare metal implementation. Uh, I just copy this command and now I can uh, run the cargo generate and uh, the just as we know, SP example. Um, it's asking whether I would like to uh, include also the VS Code uh, files. If I include it, then the VS Code is then automatically able to pick it up uh, and uh, um, run it in remote container or something like that. Uh, and now it's asking about the chip, let's say ESP32. And uh, let's generate the project, ESP example. And let me plug here uh, some ESP32. Okay, and build and flash the thing. So, yeah, ESP32 is connected and cargo ESP flash. Always build with a release uh, because debug is quite big and uh, you will increase the, the flash time. And uh, we can pass there also the monitor option, uh, which will flash and monitor the thing. Now I can uh, pick the peripheral. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fetching everything. The compilation is running. The same thing as we are you know, if we are building for desktop. Uh, and, and at the end, uh, it should uh, link everything and uh, flash it to ESP32. Yeah, uh, the flashing process is here. Yeah, relatively quickly with the bare metal since it's smaller and the chip started, uh, uh, it was uh, powered on and mm, chip is alive. Okay, so that's an uh, example how to start um, and let's uh, do something more. I have here another chip or another board with the same chip. Uh, this is ESP body, there's just a few buttons and uh, LCD screen. And let's see some other examples that we have here. ESP body. 32 body RS example. Cargo ESP flash release monitor. Okay, and select 
relatively quickly. And maybe you should see something once it's rebooted. Yes, and there it is. Hello, Rust. Wonderful. Uh, and since we are in Rust, we can leverage uh, and the examples feature and uh, in the directory examples, we have other examples. So example and let's see car. Okay, you can see it, it's reusing the build process, the build artifacts, and soon we should have a moving car on the screen. Yes, 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 it's rolling, it's trolleybus. Nice. <laughs> uh, Okay, so then um, um, what we also recommend to people when they would like to start is to look directly at the ESP Hall projects. And in this ESP Hall, um, let's see, uh, for example, C3, uh, ESP C3 Hall. SP32 C3, uh, which is risk architecture. The, the architecture that I showed you here is the Extensa. Uh, and the, the one that is being more and more popular these days are chips with risk five architecture uh, because of uh, price and uh, the power consumption, uh, which is very important for battery operated solutions. So uh, let's go and let's try to uh, see which examples are provided here. And uh, let's choose uh, hello RGB example. Cargo ESP flash release example RG hello RGB. And yeah, monitor just to see whether it's running. And now, yeah, I need to add more features here, smart LED, because now we will be uh, blinking with a smart LED, which is confusing many people. It's not LED. Um, let's see, it's a smart LED, so it has multiple colors. So it's multiple LEDs in one. And yes, it was flashed, and now you can see colorful LED that is changing. And this algorithm is implemented in Rust. So let's see how this is done. Example, uh, hello, RGB. And if I go to main loop, which is here, you can see here I have the for loop. I have hue and I iterate uh, over 0 to 250, uh, 255. And then it's converted to uh, data, which is then sent uh, to the smart LED. Really simple. <laughs> OK. so. Um, so that, that was what I was showing. Uh, then let me show you another example um, with the S3 box. This is this nice device. And in this case, uh, I will show you how we started uh, development of POC. Uh, and uh, then we try to do it with the web assembly. Uh, so let's say that I have the code here. Flash. So I'm searching for this line. <laughs> okay, let's flash this this example. And this uh, this box has a display, and uh, there is also an IMU unit uh, with the accelerometer. So if I there is a small ghost, <laughs> if I tip it, uh, it, it will go down based on the accelerometer uh, values. So maybe I can reset it. Yeah, so that's so not good, Mace. Yeah, here. Here, uh, if I tilt it, uh, it should move. Yeah, it's, it's moving based on the, the gravity and value of an accelerometer. Uh, so this is originally uh, Rust uh, bare metal uh, that we wrote. And then we uh, find out that this embedded graphics, uh, which is kind of a standard for writing uh, in Rust for uh, graphical applications. Um, and it's possible to run it with WebAssembly. So let me show you uh, how it's 
can be done with the WebAssembly. So using sharing the same code, I'm now using npm run serve. Uh, this is a scaffolding uh, around it. Uh, the npm is then calling the cargo uh, to build the, the similar thing, but not for Extensa or Risk Five target, but for WebAssembly. And if I go to localhost 80, I can see it here. So the same thing that I was running on the chip, thanks to the Rust, I am running in the web browser. So, and now here I can connect, for example, uh, arrows uh, as the sensors uh, for, for motion. So, yep, yeah, uh, this is nice. This is working. And uh, here uh, I can show you also the, the, the shared code uh, that we did. And uh, in ESP32S3 box, uh, I have the similar version that uh, can run uh, uh, this uh, on this this box. So this, this is really nice. Uh, very nice feature of, of Rust. Uh, you can have the, the business logic. In the, this case, is uh, moving maze <laughs> with the ghost <laughs> uh, so, and, uh, and share it within the project. So for example, the graphical developer can iterate really quickly in WebAssembly, and then um, uh, the embedded developer can take the code and, uh, and make it ready for, uh, you know, for the uh, running on real hardware. So really big advantage of, of having Rust. <sighs> Okay, um, so that, that was the bare metal part. Uh, there is also a STD version uh, where you can use the existing Wi-Fi, uh, existing Bluetooth, existing LVGL library. So if you already know C and embedded development, uh, then you probably can use this uh, ESP-IDF uh, uh, combination. And we have to say big thank you to, to com big contributors uh, from communities uh, uh, next and uh, even Markov, uh, who did like a really amazing job and uh, help us to uh, make uh, this uh, work with uh, expressive chips. Uh, one interesting thing that we introduced uh, is also open hardware, not only open software, but open hardware uh, that uh, you can find an ESPRS uh, and it's, uh, it's the project. There is board. Here it is, Rust board. And uh, you can design your own hardware based on this project. Uh, you can even purchase this board. It's uh, available on uh, Moser and, uh, and um, AliExpress. Uh, and uh, you can also design your own. So we recommend it for students. Uh, uh, the KiCad is open source software that you can use uh, for designing uh, the hardware. And you can just produce at the end uh, the Gerber file and send it to a uh, manufacturer to, to manufacture your boards uh, with your designs. And we already seen some very nice uh, designs. And this is really cool because um, um, this design is tested and uh, all the hardware here is supported by Rust and we, we did it. Uh, uh, the testing and uh, also this Rust board uh, is uh, part of a training that first systems did. Uh, so uh, those of you who are uh, familiar with uh, embedded uh, world knows first systems, and uh, you can uh, you can find more information at their website. So um, we have regular, uh, regarding our community, we have this regular community meeting. You can find us at uh, github.com slash ESPRS and uh, at the Rust discussions, uh, we are posting um, updates and uh, topics for discussion. Uh, and here is also the link about the training. So if you are beginning, uh, we, um, Together with them, we um, published the open source book uh, that uh, uh, is explaining the basics uh, of uh, how to use uh, embedded uh, Rust and how to start the development. Okay. Um, so we have also some uh, awesome list. <laughs> it's relatively small, <laughs> uh, but we welcome any contributions. So if we go to SPRS and here in the repository is the awesome list. So feel free if you know about any uh, project that is interesting or any tool related to expressive chips, uh, please feel free to submit a PR there. 
And uh, here are also some inspiration for you, what is possible to do with uh, expressive chips. Um, for example, uh, if you're into variables, there is a very nice uh, book about ultimate guide to inform variable technologies. Um, you can find there a lot of inspirations how uh, ESPs uh, and uh, can, can be used, and you can program it in Rust or in Arduino. Uh, for example, here is the, the community uh, that created here in Brno this uh, uh, clocks, and uh, for example, kids during the summer camp were programming it. Really nice. And uh, from Bratislava, the city nearby, uh, there is the Grafana Labs. Uh, so even they created uh, some funny uh, examples how to use uh, ESP32, like monitoring uh, sourdough uh, if you are baking a bread <laughs> with ESP32 and connected it to the Grafana Cloud, which is uh, open source. So, uh, so many things uh, to, to share with you. Uh, and uh, we are uh, located in Brno in Czech Republic. Uh, so if you happen to be around uh, in the Brno, let us know. Uh, we, we are happy to, to discuss uh, with you some topics. And uh, hopefully the next year, uh, if uh, there will be a meetup in person, probably in spring or a little bit later, um, we are planning to, to organize a workshop. So maybe we can... Uh, have some session also in person with real hardware uh, in Linz. So uh, that's all from me, uh, and I'm ready to answer, answer some questions.